gentlemen, welcome to Once Human. This is a open world looter shooter survival game that has just came out in July 9th. If you've been watching my channel, you already probably know what this game is about. If you're new to this channel, this game is sort of a Daisy plus Rust mix. However, it is not Rust. This game is a MMORPG. It is not what you think, it's not a hardcore survival game. And for example, if you're starting and you want to play in a PvE server, or if you want to play in a PvP server, I highly suggest to just go to a PvP server, because you will have some PvE and you will have PvP interactions where if you go to a PvE server, you will barely have any PvP interactions and you will basically miss out on the PvP fun. However, PvP in this game is not kill on sight. It is opt-in, toggle, PvP, and that means you have to hold P to activate PvP and the other player has to do it as well in order to kill them. But if you're the only one doing that, you won't be able to kill them. So that's basically how PvP works in this game. We are gonna jump into PvP server. We are on European server. I already have a warband in European PvP 01000001. This is the server we are playing in. So let's just select that and click confirm. Uh, let's just click confirm and click enter game. So without further ado, let me just get my character done. The character customization doesn't really matter. The only thing that matters, if you hover your mouse at the bottom right corner, there's a weight system in the game. So if you're below 65 kilograms or on 65 kilograms you will have a increased melee attack speed while the damage of the melee is reduced and you will have more stamina which is it's not that great but you get more stamina for however for 65 to 85 kilograms you will get torso damage reduction plus 10 percent and stamina recovery speed plus 20 percent although you will lose a 25 stamina uh, for pvp this would be ideal which is the 65 to 85 but if you go to 85 kilograms melee attack speed minus 10 percent while damage plus 15 percent rolling speed minus 20 and weapons ability plus 15 i'm just gonna make my character till it looks like this barely as soon as it reaches that and you can see as more you increase it your weight increases so i decrease it weight is 72 if i keep decreasing it it's 56 now i'm not gonna get i'm not gonna get that skinny i just wanted to have 66 to 67 maybe like that 66 uh, long legs i don't know why i would have this i'm just gonna keep this to the shortest i don't want my character to be tall height i can reduce that to the lowest i'm gonna be a shorty and that's it that's all that matters Alrighty, our character is finished. It took us about 10 hours. Name character, yes. Let's get it started. We are not gonna go through cutscenes because we're skipping all of them. But here she is. Look at her! Oh boy. Okay, so the first things we're gonna do is go through the UI. If you press F6, the game gives you a survival manual. This is where basically you can find everything in the game. I feel like they're missing a lot of stuff written in here so they have to work on this a lot we loot things with f that's at least my keybind so that's how i loot things um i'm gonna press escape and go to settings right there screen shake to zero camera distance to maybe a little bit higher keyboard roll to c i highly suggest changing roll to c and changing crouch to control now let's go to settings video performance make sure you put this to no restrictions and if you have nvidia or any other programs that cap your fps this is the best way to play the game put this to no restrictions and cap your fps with a external program to like 144 or maybe to like 240 or 360 for me that's what i'm gonna do no restrictions do note if you put this to 120 there will be input lag just because you're capping this through the game it's always not efficient to cap your fps through games so just do it with an external program such as nvidia control panel or just rivet tuner lowest if you want but mine is very high anti-aliasing we're going to turn that to lowest i don't like anti-aliasing and render scale is okay everything is looking good make sure you turn off motion blur and make sure vsync is turned off other than that last thing you need to change is vfx because when you shoot guns you will see smoke so turn this off a couple things you need to change in mouse display is go to gameplay and quick use items put this to on crouch to stop sprinting turn this off i don't know why you would want to stop sprinting when crouching that is terrible display whispers i like to turn this off this is basically other people's things that they put on the ground so just turn this off and that's about it pistol fire mode this set this to hold and single burst fire mode set this to hold as well this basically is for burst weapons and for pistols so you don't have to click 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 when you're shooting a pistol you just have to hold to shoot the pistol mouse smoothing turn this to zero why would you even have that i mean what just turn it off 
I'll change this later if they change anything with the sensitivity in the game, but for now, these are my sensitivity settings. Controller aim assist. If you play on controller, you're disgusting, but so controller does not exist in the game yet, so you can't really do anything here. So basically, I don't even know why the devs put this in the game, but tutorial done. We are finally landing, so we're gonna just straight away land to this spot over here. That's exactly where I'm gonna land. This campsite is used for, basically I use this thing for teleporting quickly when I need to. So for example, if I right now self-destruct, I will die and I can give up. And since I placed my campsite, I can now just click respawn and campsite respawn. Just like that, we respawn on the campsite. So you can build a campsite by pressing T and then it costs you, I guess, 10 logs. Anyways, let's press B and just build our base anywhere. It doesn't matter where you build it because later you can move your base. All right, so you can access the cradle by holding tab like this or you can press O on your keyboard and it will open cradle. So now we need to go to medics and just learn the essential stuff the game asks us to. So let's just do that. This is the furnace, this is the recycling bench. And the way you get these memetics is you level up. So what I'm gonna do is press enter, just go here, settings. And I just like to turn off basically the chat to like five lines, message fade out on, and just turn off world chat, just like that. Like if you don't wanna see this, that's completely fine. You won't see it as you turn it off. And as you can see, the chat is not moving now. So we have more screen space and no flood coming in press enter again we have mail so let me just see what that is this is where you can find basically all the loot and stuff and of course claim all nothing to claim delete there you go so now let's get some gravel let's get some copper ore all right so we're gonna go to facilities furnace is found over here Use build it furnace. as for building controls your base is a big cube as you can see before it used to be a circle or a cylinder but now it's a cube and as you can see there's like regions red areas and stuff white is your area and if you have a friend or your teammate you can give access for them so press you on your keyboard go to friends friends and click on your friend make sure you add them click on your friend and if you right click him click on friend permissions and click on building now your friends can build in your base because you gave them access to your base so if you, if you want to give them access to your storage click this enable and now your friends can access your chests and can build as well and if you don't want them to access your workbenches which i don't know why you wouldn't want that uh, this doesn't hurt at all so this is on by default but these ones are off by default and you can also right click and click hive application and invite them to your hive hive is basically your small group of your friends hive has no purpose other than purifying echo stones together I'll get into that later. It's not going to be for this video though. It's more in depth, but this is the basics basically. So if you click B and click tilde or the mark on your keyboard next to one and escape and tab, you will enter flying mode. And if you hold the space bar, you will go up. If you hold C, you will go down. If you W to move forward, S back, A to left, D right, L to show wires and plumbing to hide wires and plumbing and Z to move your territory if you don't like your territory. And as you can see, it just snaps to other people's bases when you try to move it like that, which is cool. And this is basically how you're gonna build bases with your friends. You're gonna merge bases together like this, snap them together. And basically you can then form a big three by three cube and then just build a big wall of base. Let's go and get some materials, copper ingots for our disassembly bench. If you're wondering how's my character not wearing a mask, well, you just click, you just hold your mouse on your armor and you just click V and it just hides it, just like this. All right, now let's get the coal. Let's make the copper ingots. We still don't have enough because I need more copper ore. But and you can turn on your flashlight, although I don't really like using the flashlight in this game. Crafting gives you XP. So the best way, if you want to get level 50 in two days, all you need to do is chop logs and just craft charcoal. It's going to give you, I don't know, something like 80 XP per stack. Because look at this, I'm going to craft one coal 
and for that I got 1 XP. You can see I got coconuts in my inventory and the way you get them is by just chopping palms and if I chop this palm right here it should give us some coconuts and coconuts are gonna spoil pretty fast as you can see four hours of durability so we got two more coconuts over here. Since we're next to the river just we're just gonna collect some dirty water because I'll need this dirty water later anyways so let me just collect some I'm gonna get about 200. Do know that there's a waste system in the game so the more water you hold your character is gonna get encumbered or overwhelmed with weight so for example here you can see 1832 you can also drop items if you don't want to hold them and as you can see it just dropped to 1082 so that's the weight you can also drop items to your players or to your friends you cannot drop items such as armor and guns unless you use an exploit and you can of course do that but uh it's kind of pointless but if you want, you can surely do that. Now let's click B, click right click and build a disassembly bench like that. I also forgot to put my butterfly that I have in here. So just click F, right click it and click F again. Sync to cradle. Uh, I can now use this deviation as my pet to fight for me. So now what I'm going to do is just going to click J. Make sure you claim all your rewards here uh this is journey in here you will need to basically complete every single thing and you will get stock rooms and controllers for this since we're here i'm gonna click you and you can have a warband in this game so i already have my own warband made but if you guys want to join my warband just join my discord dm me we'll get that sorted um you can just click like that and we will probably make a warband 2 in the future if we cannot fit players in the main one also hive i'm gonna make a hive create a hive create doesn't matter just make doesn't matter the name i just made it and you can invite your friends here for now i'm gonna leave it be how it is now the game wants us to go to monolith ruins which is over here but first what i'm gonna do is i'm just quickly gonna loot this area here because we're in the starter area and again we can use tilde to scan the area here and see items as you can see if i scan you will get these things marked as yellow for you so you can know where loot is now i'm gonna have to kill every single zombie you basically find it just make sure you kill them because they will drop you acid and acid is going to be important in the late game it's better to get something early without farming in late game so just imagine i farmed all the acid i would have so much late game anyways i you have to activate these things you need anchor parts to activate these rifts. One thing you can do with melee is you don't really have to use crossbow. You can just use melee like this. You jump and you swing like this. Although melee is kind of shitty to use sometimes. But you can use melee like this in the game. You have to have a full you have to have a fast swinging weapon though, however. So if this weapon is slow, you won't be able to really do this. The only way to use melee is this. You jump and you slash. If you left click, it's a fast swing. And if you jump and right click, it's a power swing. But if you use melee like this, it's kind of slow. So I don't really advise using it. Only use it if you do the jump swing. Anyways, we're about to loot our first crates, which are located over here. So... This is a storage crate, which gives you good materials from it. And this is a weapon crate. I'm sure you already know what a weapon crate is from the tutorial, but we got steroid and we got a weapon and we got a mod. You will get weapon modifications from these weapon crates. If you loot gear crates, you will get armor modifications. And these red crates are only a one-time thing. They don't respawn. They only respawn when the season resets. And you will get blueprints from these red crates. I will show you a full list. In the description, I have a full map of where these red crates are located. If you're interested, you can go check it out. And there's the gear crate, which is located on the middle of the road. So if you click Q or if you click K or I, whatever your keybinds are to open inventory, you click gear and you right click your weapon and put mods on it and you just click F to equip it. And these are all your mods. I'm going to put any mod right now. It gives me 3% crit rate. Doesn't matter. Just put anything at this point for now. We did this just for some supplies. We did this just for some scrap. We're going to just focus on the main quest now. So this is disassembly bench. Whenever you come back from looting, just click X. Disassemble everything and all the loot that you disassembled goes back to your inventory. Now we will need to uh, build a storage crate, so let's click O. 
Let's click to the fourth category and click on wooden support. Learn that and learn the storage here. Now we click B, right click and build a crate. And we can just store all the stuff we don't need. Yes, and press T to sort it. If it's sorted wrong, you just click T and it will sort it for you, the items. And H to merge them. So let's say you have some items in your inventory that you want to quickly merge. You click H and it just merges it for you. You can cl click enter and you can rename the box to whatever you want. What are we doing over here? Bro is going crazy with these rocks. Holy... One thing I suggest doing highly, let's go to settings, click settings, let's go to keyboard, let's go to standard and scroll down until you see, keep sprinting, put this to plus or H, I like mine to put to H and whenever you press H and as you can see, you need to also do this for vehicle as well if you want vehicles to have this and this will make your vehicles auto drive separate for each vehicle. So for four vehicles, you have to set it and for two wheel vehicles, you have to set it it's called force move put this to H and now whenever you drive your vehicle and you press H or whenever you run you just click H and right now I'm literally I'm not holding W or anything my character is just auto running I press H and it just auto runs you can now go take a poopy in the toilet go take a pee while your character is running straight all right let's loot the crate here the task is asking us to do that I'm just gonna speed run these tasks quick I'm not going to include conversations with NPCs because I believe other people don't really want to watch that. But make sure you loot every single materials you find on the ground. This game is, again, 99% all the time just loading and scouting and killing mobs. So make sure we also kill all the animals we find because we'll need the letter to make armor soon. Alright, once you're done talking with her, she's gonna give you a blueprint. Also, if you hate talking with NPCs and hearing their annoying voice, go to the sound, click dialogue volume, and you can change this to whatever you like. Zero or ten. I like this on five or ten, because they just, they're not as loud. Alright, so if you click now escape and click bind discord, here you can bind your discord and link your account to get some rewards here. As you can see, you get star chrome, so I'm gonna just do that. Link my discord. And we have claimed the rewards. Next thing is just click on Astral Doolets and here you will get 20 Astral Doolets at 6 a.m. every day and can exchange them for special items. Only thing I highly advise buying here is the um, Adrenaline Shots. Uh, this is basically just... You can buy whatever you want. I like to buy Adrenaline Shots. If you want, you can buy Sanity Gummies. But what I would buy is just probably Heals because Heals are important. Sanity Gummies are kind of useless because later in the game, Sanity is not going to be a problem. For now though, let's go back to our assembly bench because that's our task and assemble everything. Everything that we've assembled, press H, goes into the box. Also, whenever you go to build mode like this, you can scroll click on the box or whatever you want to build again. You just look at it and you click scroll and it's going to copy the building for you so you don't have to go through the menu again. So just click scroll and you can build the box just like that. And now I can just store more stuff I need to store. So now we have to open the memetic screen and unlock a gear workbench, which is going to be this. Now we need to go to build mode and build a workbench. Also, let's claim all the rewards from the journey task, which is opened again by pressing J. Not sure why is there no claim all button? Why do I need to click on everything one by one? But, you know, work in progress, I guess. And now we'll need to grind for copper again. See you guys when I'm done. So right now, when you start in the game, uh, click escape, click shop events, click events, click event, click dot, click accept invitation, and click buy the invitation code. Put the invitation code here, and after you put the invitation code here, you click confirm. So basically, you can use any player's code and confirm binding. You claim shared rewards. Once you get level 10, you'll be able to get your own code that you will be able to give to your other friends. So that's how it works. Now here you can just claim shared weapons. As you can see, it gives you a weapon, but it does not actually give you a blueprint. And it says right here, owner, your friend. Looting cars is going to be important in this game because looting cars will give you portable mixed fuel. And you will need fuel a lot in this game, late game. So I suggest just following the road like this and just looting cars on the way as you go. And cars, I believe, respawn every day or maybe every three days in real time not in game time but in real time so in real life time unless they changed it i'm not really sure but they do not respawn quick so all right so now i'm gonna build this base here i just heard a deer 
Uh, okay, I'm lagging. That is cool. Into my collection of the leathers. We'll need these raw hides. But yeah, now as you can see, I moved my base. And on the top right corner, you can see that there's a cooldown of 10 minutes each time you move it. I believe as you level up higher, the cooldown increases. But the devs recently changed it so that it's only 10 minutes. So maybe there it won't increase. But I'm not really entirely sure on that. Anyways, I'm gonna press T. I'm just gonna build a campsite here. Don't remind me again. And we can actually craft gear without having the workbench. So if you click armor crafting, I'm gonna just grab everything from my boxes. A decent amount, enough to make us armor. So now if you take a look at our armor, we are wearing three parts of rustic set. You can wear total six. So we're wearing three of these rustic parts and we're wearing three of these test subject masks. So what I'll just do is I'll just unequip the test subject top like that and since we have rustic hat rustic gloves rustic shoes all we need is one more armor part which i already equipped we need a rustic jacket so let's make a rustic jacket we need three raw hides that's why we kill these animals for and now we just need to equip it as you can see i already had it in my inventory i didn't really need to craft it uh, regardless this one's a tier one this one's a tier zero obviously it's lower tier so it has less or worse stats and that's it if you don't like the look of it just hide it and now if you have mods just put the mods on the armor by right clicking on the armor like that and just click the plus icon put it on this one mod can be put only on one armor so if you already have it on something else you cannot put it so that's the only mod we got for all of these armors as for the ak i'll put the crit rate mod on this instead because we'll be using the ak i guess as you can see we are getting gathering speed plus 20 percent for just wearing these four parts of rustic armor we also get movement speed melee damage hp which is nice but we care about that 20%. Now, I leveled up to level 5. So, as you can see, I'm level 5. If you click O, go to Memetics. And here in the top left corner, you can find gold specializations. I highly recommend don't mess around with this yet until you reach level 50. Because on level 50 is when you decide your endgame and all the stats and all the specializations. So, for now, just leave these gold stats... Unless you really care about it, then you can go ahead and choose these. But for me, I'm just going to wait till I reach level 50 and then I'm going to choose them. You can also re-roll them later on as well. But for now, let's just leave it be. Our copper is done. I have over 32 now. All right, so we got our 45 copper ingots. That's enough to build these benches. The cool thing is when you build a bench, you can use it. Let's say you build something, you craft some armor. You're done with it. Let's say you need more copper ingots. Instead of farming, just click R. And you will get back all the materials that you used to build a bench. Build a different bench. For, for example, let's say you need to build something else that costs copper. You build that. When you're done with it, you just demolish it again. And, you know, you get the point. Looking good. Let's build a workbench. Supplies workbench. And let's also build this foundation here. I'm not sure why I removed that. All right. Now, we need to unlock a MP7 and shotgun blueprint. So, let's go to memetics again. Over here. Basic gear. Learn. As soon as I learned that memetic, we have unlocked the raid armor. It shows right here one part, two parts, three parts. When you wear one part, you will get plus 15% gathering speed, which is what we need. Make sure you combine it well, though. For example, I'm already wearing the rustic hat, rustic gloves, rustic shoes, rustic jacket. I don't want to remove any of them, because if I remove any of them, I will lose the set bonus for the four parts of the armor. So then I would have to either remove the mask or the pants. But the problem is, if the armor does not have a mask or pants then you would have to change your armor i'm just gonna craft the pistol for now it's really cheap to craft it i'm not gonna use it i'm most likely not gonna use it but the game wants us to craft some ammo so let's just craft copper pistol ammo i guess yep do that all right now the game wants us to go to dead's will which is there as we are moving around i'm gonna teach you something that should you should do from the start as you explore here uh, you can right click over here anywhere on the map and change these pins accordingly and you can rename them as well like that so what i'm gonna use these pins for is loot tracking loots and tracking accessories so for example let's go to this spot over here and i'm just gonna change this to let's say this let's put a marker like this boom and right now i'm gonna right click it oh i see animals I need these animals. I'm sorry, but I gotta grab these animals. I don't know where the other deer ran, but... Oh, there you are. Gotta grab them all. I like the new AK sound, though. It sounds cool. I really like it. 
I like it. Alright, so this is the spot I was talking about. As you can see, there's this uh, event. I don't know. I don't know how you call this, but it's a puzzle. So we found this puzzle here. This is why we're gonna put these markers on the map. Keep track of what we loot and whatnot. So let's click investigate. And the way you do this puzzle is you just hold X, scroll down, or move down your mouse. The character was jumping, so it's this one. Hooray. And there you go. You just mimic what the character did, and you get loot for it. Just like that. Controller, Stardust, and Stellar Planula, which is going to be used for an NPC in the shop. So I'm just going to go now follow the quest line here. Now, since we did the first attachment, I'm just going to give you all the full location of where all these attachments are. Now, I'm going to do these later. As you can see, I already marked them. Um, there's a full map in my description, so just check that out and explore it yourself. Now, without further ado, let's go into this POI here. Surely, as soon as you start in the game, you will want to meet your friends. But you can go to Deadswell right here. Once you go here, you find this teleport tower. It's already active, so you don't need to activate it. And you click G, and this is how you swap worlds. And this is where your friends could be in World 1 or World 2. But if you want to see what world you are in, you just look in the top right corner. And you can see I'm in World 1, so... If you want to meet with your friend, they have to come to World 1 through the Teleport Tower. Or through a Deviant, which is obtained randomly across the map. And you can teleport each other with the Deviant item. That is... Anyways, that's how you meet your friends. Now, you can also invite your friends to a party so you can see them on the map. You click U. And you can go friends. You click friends. You click here. Invite a team. Once they join the team, you press M. And you'll be able to see each other on the map. Also, if you click right click, hold shift and click it. You can share the coordinates for your teammate or you know, in the world chat. And if you want to share this in the warband chat or in the team chat, just click here. This is where you're sharing it. This is what channel you're in. So if you're in this channel, you're just seeing this channel, but you're not sharing it in the channel. You have to change this right here on what channel you want to share it in. So if I want to share it in Warband, you just click Warband here. Now if I click Enter, it's going to share the coordinates in the Warband chat. And Warband chat is here. And as you can see, if I click the coordinates, it shows the coordinates on the map, just like that. So that's how you can share coordinates for each other. So our task now is to unlock a memetic basic furniture. Learn this. We have to learn the doors and we have to learn the basic furniture. The game wants us to build a bed. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move my base close here so I don't have to run around. Um, actually, I can just TP back to my base like this. Like that. Build a bed. And when you sleep on the bed, as you can see, your health will restore and your sanity will also restore. Although the bed is just... It's obsolete. I'm pretty sure the f festering gel that you get from killing the first boss will restore your sanity. So, I don't know about the bed. Unless they nerfed it. Beds are not that useful anymore in the game. But anyways, let's craft a copper pickaxe now. Just follow what the game wants you to do. We have to also learn it. So, go to memetics. First category. Learn the copper pickaxe. Here we go. And now we can craft it here. There we go. Copper pickaxe. Let's get that going. Let's also craft a melee weapon. I'll craft a bat. Sure. That's... The only option I got. Bet is on. And whenever you don't need any more weapons, you just click to the disassembly bench and just disassemble these weapons, like so. Disassemble a fish, you get a spoiled food. Cool, I guess. Omega oh, lol. Alright, we have a bat. We can swing, just like that. You can press L and fall. this is how you track the main quest. So this is the main quest. Let's click F to track it. And now we are tracking the uh, main quest. So I'm just gonna TP back over there and speak to the NPC get that done gotta speak with the trader as well more talking with this dude more talking again all right after you're done talking with these four NPCs you're gonna get your first motorcycle and you press G and that's how you summon the motorcycle now this is where the fun begins we're gonna get the juicy stuff from completing this task also the motorcycle is too loud so if you don't like it you can just also lower it by going to vehicle volume and just lower it over here. I'll just lower it by 50%. And that is a lot of camps put in just one spot, bro. That's crazy. We need logs to put this thing down, so let's get that log. Thank God that there's space enough for me. We put the campsite down and now we have to just explore this manor. We're going to do this quick. Bro, the cross here is just disgusting. We're gonna have to fight a big dude here. 
don't really have to uh, avoid any damage. All right, and that's it. He is gone. We press escape to leave the dungeon. Exit dungeon right there. That is, by the way, how you leave dungeons or instances. For example, when you do silos or something. All right, so let's click activate rift anchor here. In this house, you will find a weapon crate and a red crate. So let's just get to looting that. You will also find a really good blueprint, which you will probably use till late game, which is the pistol. So try to get that and not miss out on that. I'm just going to loot whatever is here. Here we will get another weapon crate. Beautiful. And here we will get a red crate, which is the revolver pistol I'm talking about. You will have to craft it, however. Let's click on O on your keyboard, blueprints, and learn the pistol right here. You can just hold F to learn it. And there you go. You can also up upgrade blueprints, which by pressing plus, that's how you upgrade blueprints. However, for now, we're not going to do any of that. We can't even do any of that, even if I wanted to anyways. All right, let me just finish killing all these enemies. Kill you as well. How did I miss that? I don't know. All right, so as you can see, exploration complete, rod and manor. You have to basically just go to every single POI like that. Loot boxes, loot red chests in it, or the mystical creed. Or the mystical chest in it and then you just kill basic mobs to complete the exploration come on man unfreeze me already bro when you complete an exploration you will get xp for it but that's all you get really there's no point fully exploring it unless you need xp the chest is over here on the top of the building we got that covered i see you in my sight gravity that and now we just need to find a weapon crate which is going to be in this house i believe yep we got it exploration complete over here you will also find these purple glowing things uh, as you go on the map these are also i call them purple puzzles i guess and again full list of these things will be in the description on where you can find them i don't want to miss out on that and remember as you loot them make sure you mark them like this so just call it purple puzzle yeah there you go. We marked it, and now we know that we got it. You just jump on it, and you loot it. It's it's called a mystical crate, but... Yeah, there you go. We got stellar planula for that. Alright, so we're done with three POIs here. Since I'll need to go to this POI, there's a TP tower here, so... I'm just gonna drive my motorcycle up there and access the TP tower. Look how many campsites there is here. Bro, that's just crazy. I like how they just spawn in front of me, just like that. Right, we got to the TP tower. That was my goal. All right. And we just glide from the top here. Make sure you have stamina because gliding uses stamina. Oh, wait, that just recharged somehow. That was weird. You also lose momentum when you cancel the glide. So just don't do that, which is here. You interact with it. As you interact with it, you have to move the statues facing the gate. Let's move this twice, move this twice as well, move this once, and puzzle complete. We got an accessory for that. Actually, we didn't get anything for that. We didn't get no accessory for that. What the hell? But yeah, I can mark this puzzle right now, right here, as complete. I can like put it as a box so I know it's looted. Purple puzzle as well, this one, mark is looted. Alright, there's the crate. We're just gonna go get the crate and... Disregard the other enemies. If you look at your backpack right now, you can see the yellow glowing thing. And this is basically indicating if you're close to a treasure chest or not. If you get closer and closer, it's going to blink more. And when it blinks really fast, you just scan it like this. And the chest is going to appear. The chest is normally found in this building here. Look around for it. It's somewhere here. Somewhere here. Maybe it's on the top. There he is. It's on the top. Can I kill it faster, please? I'm just trying to avoid all the damage here. So these dudes don't kill me. Alright, Morphic Crate. We looted it. We got a gingerbread house for just looting that. I believe that is a deviant. That we just got. Yeah, gingerbread house is a deviant. So yeah, looting these boxes will give you deviants randomly. Now let's activate the anchor here. Last thing I need to do is just get two boxes. We found the first gear crate located over here. All right, last weapon crate was on the top of the church. We got that done. 
I still want to make that armor. So that is going to be raid pants. Boom, boom, boom. Get that done. And now we have raid pants with gathering speed. And we have rustic armor with gathering speed. So now we have total 35% gathering speed, which is nice. I'm going to put weapon damage on the armor. I'm going to put weak spot damage on the armor. Now, let's craft ourselves the Hunter BP revolver. Because I'm going to be using this weapon basically everywhere. Now, you can also calibrate weapons by clicking on them. Calibration over here. Click on the weapon and you can calibrate like that. However, I'm not going to calibrate. I'm not going to waste copper war for that. We have over 300 pistol ammo, which should be enough for this boss fight. Although I don't even need to prepare that much for it. You can kill the boss with a crossbow if you want to. And this gun is going to one-tap everything. Oh my god, the sound of it though. The sound of it though. God damn. Alright, we are ready. Remember, we unlocked the TP tower there. So we can just click or hold F and we just teleport there straight away. I probably don't even have to try to kill this boss. Gear crates as well here. Boom, into the boss fight. Ravenous Hunter, level 10. Look at him. It's gonna be an easy fight. Definitely for sure. I don't know if I should take his minigun or not, but I'm gonna take it, I guess. Yeah, definitely you should take it. This boss has two phases. He will just spawn some minions. Basically, you have to just kill these spawning portals that spawn minions. Once you do that, he's gonna come back and you can then shoot him. And one more time of the minigun. One more minion spawn. I can just summon my butterfly. I'm really not sure why my crosshair is so big. Dodge the rockets, just jump away from them. He should be dead now. If he does not die, there we go, he's dead. For the first time, he's gonna drop you a festering gel, which you will get 100%. There you go, we got it. And here we will get a boss reward loot. You can get minimum rewards, which will basically don't give you mods, but give you like energy links and electronic parts or whatever else. But f full rewards will give you modifications. I highly advise you to not use controllers early game. And I just advise you to use them on late game because you will get the best rewards on late game. Because controllers are going to be an annoying to farm or get once you run out of them. So that's just my tips for you. Once you're done with the loot, you can click escape and exit dungeon or just leave through here. And I just realized that there are benches in this room here. Well, how cool is that? Boss rooms have benches now? That's kind of crazy. This assembly benches as well. And since we got the new Deviant, I highly suggest you to just take out this one that you have and put in the festering gel like that. And now you can just sink it to cradle. It has to charge first, obviously, to use it. Um, I'm gonna get myself more logs. Alright, it's 90 out of 100. You have to give it electricity and a red light to even make it faster. A charging up, that's what I'm gonna do. Let's give it a through memetics, I believe, which is here. So let's just learn that. And give it a red light. It needs a floor, sure. There you go. I'm not going to care about customizing my base right now. I'm just going to give this deviant a red light. Like that. Now, it has deviant power and mood recovery speed increases by 12% during dormancy, okay? And to give it electricity, we'll need a generator. It's charged fully and you just do this. 
you build a fortification like that, it spawns and it just recovers HP for you. Look how cool that is. This is why I'm saying these beds are useless and sanity gummies are useless as well. You don't need them when you have a festering gel. And this deviant, by the way, is good even in endgame. So you will be using this deviant forever. So if you want to get free star crumbs, I suggest you to just go to quickly shop events, events, click on regular event, community rewards, just click, click on this, click follow and just click claim, you just get basically loot for it. Battle pass, claim all the loot here. Thank God that the battle pass is not paid to win. We get silver keys. These are used for gacha, for skins, not, let's see what we got here. Well, nothing good actually, just hair that I can do with this key, or buy with these keys. Cosmetics don't look that good either for the battle pass, so I'm just gonna refrain from buying the battle pass, I guess. I'm not seeing any good skins over here. The skins is okay for the sniper, but this is the free pass, so everyone gets it, and the premium one is just skins, basically. This is the spot we have to go to. See this house on that hill? That's where we have to go. So yeah, once you get to this house, it's located over here. They change after you complete the first one. Also, when you complete them, they will be available again in seven days. So to activate it, you have to shoot the hands. And now we just skip. Now we have to attack the creepy arms. And now you just follow the orbs, shoot the moving things. If you don't know what to shoot, just scan it once and it will be marked as blue for you. Last thing should be over here. When we're done, we just get the loot like this. And you should be able to get 7 controllers for doing this. You get a disco ball, you get some acid, 210 acid, very nice. And yeah, you can do this every 7 days. Make sure you do this. Full list of all locations of this moving house will be in the description, by the way. It's the same map, it has everything marked. You can basically see it, it's marked as moving house and orange marker over here. Yeah. If I go to shop events, click events, go to events, gather friends. On level 10 you'll be able to get and give codes to your friends, so... As you can see, my invitation code is right here, so... Your friend that is starting the game, you would go here, redeem the, clo redeem the code here, and you basically just put in this code. And here, when you click share weapons, you can just select what weapon you want to share. So for example, if you have a better weapon, you can share them that, and they will get that weapon to use. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this video. In the next episode, we're going to cover the next area. Let me know what you want to see in my next upcoming Once Human videos. I nearly have almost 1000 hours in this game, so I'm not really sure what tips and tricks everyone wants to see, but if I missed anything, let me know. I'll try my best to include everything. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care and peace out.